Part 2, the Central Processing Unit, the CPU. In Part 1, we learned that the system unit contains the Central Processing Unit. For the remainder of this workshop, we will refer to this as the CPU. But what is the job of the CPU? What can it do? How does it work? The CPU contains drives and ports that allow you to access and save information. Let's begin by learning about the drives. The CPU utilizes both built-in and portable drives. Let's begin with the built-in drives. There are two main built-in drives. The first built-in drive is the hard drive. This is the physical device or disk inside the computer where software is stored. The hard drive can be compared to a filing cabinet since your programs and data files are stored in folders also known as directories. The second built-in drive is the disk drive. The disk drive, located on the CPU, is a location where disks or flash drives can be inserted in order to save or retrieve information on a computer. The second type of drive is the portable drives. These are also known as external storage devices. The most common is the USB flash drive, which is a removable and rewritable storage device. It is smaller, faster, and has thousands of times more capacity than floppy disks or CD-ROMs. This portable flash drive can be easily plugged into a USB port. All types of files can be stored on this, such as audio files, Word documents, and PowerPoint presentations. Another portable drive is the external hard drive. The external hard drive connects to your computer with a simple USB cable. It is used to store your valuable data and add a considerable level of safety and security. Since External hard drives are located outside the computer. They allow you to keep a backup copy of all of your important files. In addition to drives, the system unit also contains ports. A port is an interface on a computer to which you can connect a device. Personal computers have various types of ports, including ports for connecting printers, USBs, and handheld devices. Now that we have covered some of the terminology, let's examine this CPU. This is just an example of how a CPU can possibly look because there are many variations. This here is the power button. It is used to power the computer on and off. This here is the disk drive. Depending on the CPU, it may contain any of the following disk drives. It may contain a CD-ROM drive, which stands for Compact Disk Read-Only Memory. This is the physical mechanism by which the computer reads information contained on a CD. CD-ROMs allow access to large amounts of data stored on CDs. This can include entire sets of encyclopedias, the World Atlas, and cool games. A CD can hold up to 400 times more data than a diskette can hold. Also, the retrieval speed is much quicker on a CD drive. The technology is available to write information or data on CDs, but generally we only read data from CDs. Another type of drive that the disk drive may contain is a CD-RW drive. With this, you can also read CD-ROMs, but it is used to copy information onto the CD. RW means that it is rewritable. You can write data on the disk multiple times. Another type of drive that the disk drive may have is a DVD drive. This stands for Digital Versatile or Video Disk. This disc allows the recording of videos, including audio tracks, advanced menu systems, and still pictures. These discs can be played back later on many DVD players and on computers with DVD-ROM drives. And last but not least, the disc drive may have a Blu-ray drive. This is the least common, however this drive enables recording, rewriting, and playback of high-definition HD videos, as well as storing large amounts of data. The format offers more than five times the storage capacity of traditional DVDs. Now let's take a look at the back of the CPU. Here we find many of the CPU's ports. Here we can see the serial port. The serial port is used for connecting the mouse, the keyboard, the monitor, and other devices. These ports here are universal serial bus or USB ports, the newer generation of the serial port. USB ports also connect MP3 players and cameras to the computer. Here we can see the printer port. This connects the printer to the computer. Another port that may be found on the back of the CPU is the Sony Philips Digital Interface or SPIDF port. This is also known as the Optical Digital Output Port. This kind of port 
digitally transfers audio from one component to another. Digital transference, as opposed to analog transmission, is immune to noise. You may also find high-definition multimedia interface, or HDMI, ports on the back of the CPU. An HDMI port connects the monitor to compatible digital audio or video devices, such as high-definition televisions.